Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Chartreuse Leprechaun. My name is Mark, your host, and it's time for our monthly update video. Now, we do this every month, usually around the 15th, usually has some programming news, some tech upgrades, problems, personal or health stuff, and we will be making our annual periodic, usual, regular, that's it, regular request for game suggestions. So please listen to that and help us out. Now, I wanted to replace the tech education with questions from y'all starting, well, as soon as possible, but there were no questions this month. So seriously, send me your questions, even nonsense questions. Uh, I don't know, what color is the sky? Do dogs bark? I'll do my best to answer all of them. And I usually close with a spiritual note about the Christian faith this month. It's about Christmas. Shocking, I know, right? Right? but not in the way you're probably used to. So stay tuned for that. Timestamps are in the description below so you can skip around, you can watch straight through. Totally up to you, but we are asking for your help with, some, with a few things. So please watch straight through. We do really want your input. So let's get started with programming news. Now, first up, a quick reminder. Every year we end up rescheduling stuff around holiday dates. And this year, no exception. Christmas and New Year's Day this year fall on Mondays when we would normally be publishing episodes of Mad Max. But those days, we believe, should be spent with family and friends doing whatever you do on those days. So we will not publish videos on those dates. Instead, we're going to publish them the next day. So the Mad Max episode for Monday, December 25th will be published on Tuesday, December 26th. And the Mad Max episode for January 1 will be published on Tuesday, January 2. And the short that would normally be published on December 26th will be published on Wednesday, December 27th. And the short that would normally be published on Tuesday, January 2nd will be published on Wednesday, January 3rd. Now, the following week, we'll be back to our normal schedule. And next, I'm repeating my request from last month. We usually do a segment called Tech Education, where we fill you in on recent technical upgrades, failures, thanks to the Chartreuse Leprechaun, of course, always, successes and changes around here. But I want to change that segment, probably permanently, but at least from time to time. I want to use that time to answer your questions. They can be on any subject about me, the channel, whatever, anything except politics and sex. I absolutely refuse to get dragged into those swamps. So put your questions in the comments, make a post in our Discord, the link for that is below, and I'll periodically put this question in the YouTube community tab. You can also submit them via Twitter and Facebook, those links are in the description below as well, and I'll do my best to answer all the ones I can fit into the time allotted for that segment, which will obviously be kind of variable. Now, with all that talk about scheduling, I want to once again remind everyone of our schedule. We publish game videos on Friday, Saturday, and Monday. And the goal is to play games that meet certain criteria for each day. Friday games will be games released uh, roughly within the last year. Saturday games will be games released in the last one to three years. And Monday games will be games released more than three years ago. As I said earlier, I'm making my usual request for game suggestions, and we do pay attention to your suggestions. Fallout 4 was a suggestion. Bioshock was a suggestion. So was Bioshock Infinite. Outer Worlds was a suggestion. Surviving Mars was a suggestion. The Mr. Prepper Animal Farm DLC was a suggestion. So keep the suggestions coming. Just be aware, this is how we try to slot the games we play. Which brings us back to the subject of suggestions and games. There are several links in the description below. These are lists of games. Each one is a separate file. One day, I'll put them all in a single file. But that day has not yet come. Actually, it has come. There is now one single file. But one single file. And uh, it's a single file with multiple tabs, and each tab has a separate list. There's a list of games I'm considering for various series slots. That list is not set in stone. Some games I have, some games I don't. 
Obviously, being on a limited budget, if you suggest one of the games I own, it gets priority. There are games on there that have been suggestions. They get higher consideration generally than the ones I pick out. There's also a list of all the Steam games I have. There's another list of all the games I have available at Humble Bundles. Some are installed, some aren't. And I haven't listed all the games I have at other places, Epic, GOG. Uh, it's not a lot of games, but I have them. I'll have a tab for that eventually. There's another list of games suggested by you commenters and viewers. Some of these games are marked out, which means we've either already played them personally or as a series, or we can't play them for various reasons. And most of that, well, some of that, okay, well, part of that is in my comfort zone. Feel free to suggest games outside my comfort zone, though. Yeah, make your suggestions. I'll add them to the appropriate lists on Google Drive, and they may even make it to the wish list on Steam. Yes, I do have one of those, too. You'll have to go to Steam to check it out. Now, moving on to your comments. First, once again, I want to thank you all for all of your comments, tips, and suggestions. You give the best help, and you do an amazing job of not giving spoilers, too. And I want to remind you all, it may be a bit before I can actually make use of something you suggest. I try to respond to comments as quickly as I can. So far, I'm getting to all of them, usually same day. Kind of proud of that, actually. But no matter what, it's going to be at least two episodes before I can make use of any information you provide. See, I'm normally one episode ahead of whatever episode you're seeing, sometimes two. So if you're watching, say, episode five, episode six is already recorded, which means it will be episode seven before I can use the information you gave me. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. And now it's time for tech education, the part of the video where I talk about the things we've learned on the technical side during the last month. Now, this is a short segment this month because there's almost nothing to talk about. We have no new gear. We haven't upgraded anything. We haven't changed anything. There is quite literally almost nothing to report. We're still working on getting our lighting sorted out. We're still working on our audio quality. Um, the big thing we're working on is color grading to overcome the dark colors because YouTube makes dark things really dark because of their compression. It's particularly bad in our Chernobyl Light series content. Fortunately, DaVinci Resolve makes those adjustments fairly easy. I just have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, we are just having to work at getting the shading right, trying to set up precepts wherever possible and so on. And it's really a work in progress that may take some time, which means we need to know how we're doing. Uh, encouragement, directions, tips, suggestions, we need all of that. So please and thank you. But, you know, that's all in process and we'll get there. There's another problem I need your help with, and that's an RGB thing. As you know, I love big green all the RGB sync together, this awesome shade of leprechaun green emanating from it. Absolutely awesome. Until I disconnected my headset the other day. Now, it looks like this. I swear, all I did was disconnect the headset. I did eventually get the color right on the front fans, but none of the others are right now. I've uninstalled and reinstalled all the color software, the Mystic Light for the motherboard, L Connect 3, as bad as that one is, I still have it. Nothing fixed it. So if you have any suggestions, there, um, bring them on. I want them. Please. And that leads us to another health update. First of all, let's talk about the insurance situation. I hope you all caught the midweek short last week about the medical records company. If not, there's a link in the description below. Let me just repeat myself by saying there actually are companies out there that suck worse than AT&T. <laughs> I'm amazed, but it probably shouldn't be. I'll sum up the whole situation by saying the records company created this whole mess. They waited a month to even send the invoice to get paid so they could release the records. Then they put all the problems back on the insurance company rather than their own mistakes. And 
They made me and the insurance company do all the work to sort out the issues and come up with a solution. So like I said in that video, I'm still spending time on my patio decompressing. It's been two weeks since all that happened. But the records are finally in the hands of the insurance company. It just took a month longer than it should have. And now we're just waiting for their review to be complete. As I said all along, I think we've got a pretty good case. It's just a matter of letting the process play itself out. And now a back surgery update. So that surgery took place on November 16. And since then, some things are better. I have a mostly normal stride for the first time in years. There's no more shooting pain from the low back down into my thighs. The quads, the thigh muscles are still weak. And of course, that hurts. There's a couple of very localized pain points in the low back and the hip. There's a lot of muscle pain in the back and some joint pain because I keep bending in ways that I shouldn't. You know how it is, right? You feel really good, so you do things you shouldn't because those things will make you feel really bad, right? Well, yeah, they do. Now, they had me on hydrocodone 10 post-surgery, and I already took myself down to hydrocodone 5. Maybe I maybe did that too soon, though. Got some real pain areas that the fives don't quite cover. The surgery did not help the shooting pain down the back of my leg. That was caused by a slip, not a fall where I torqued my low back in ways it's just not meant to go. And, you know, honestly, I would have been amazed if the surgery had helped that. And the problem is likely a bound up nerve in an injured muscle or a problem in the sacroiliac joint. Movement therapy PT should take care of that. Um, sometime in January, I should get the referral for that and we'll see what happens. So all in all, this was a success. And that brings us to our spiritual message this month. As we come into the Christmas season, I thought I would sum up what we've covered so far in Philippians 4.8, and even edge into the next item, whatever is right. So as a reminder, this is what that verse says. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Now, this verse tells us to think on these things. Most people understand our thoughts drive our actions and our speech. So how we think determines how we interact with ourselves, other people, and with God. The first thing to remember is truth comes first. Without truth, none of the rest of this matters. If we're Dealing with individual standards of truth, there is no right or wrong. Stealing becomes okay. Lying becomes okay. Even horrendous things like genocide become okay, all because there's no objective standard of truth, which means I can live according to my truth, even if it conflicts with your truth. And secondly, speaking the truth is honorable. In the life of King David, he called out people for not speaking the truth and being dishonorable. And his closest companions called him out for it too. Jesus called out his own disciples when they did it, which shows this is true in the Old and the New Testament because as we learned a couple episodes ago, God never changes according to Hebrews 13, eight. So the next point in the verse is to think on whatever is right. There is a standard for right and wrong, just like there is a standard of truth versus falsehood, honorable versus dishonorable. And one of the main points of Paul's letters is that he teaches according to the scriptures. What he had for scripture was the Old Testament. So speaking the truth, being honorable, frankly, all the things listed in Philippians 4, 8, they actually require you know the word of God. Do you know when you're hearing biblical truth? Do you know when you're hearing a lie that sounds like biblical truth? So let's look at a great example. Um, there's a song by Casting Crowns. The song is called Make Room, and it was released in 2019, made the top 50 of the song charts, and I'm willing to bet some of you Christians have the lyrics in your head right now. The problem is the song is not based on scripture. It starts with a lie. So let's look at the lyrics. The first line is a family hiding from a storm, but they weren't hiding from a storm. There was no storm. They were obeying a government edict, traveling from their home 
to another town to register for the census and then go back home. The second line says they found no place at the keeper's door. Now, this is partially true. There was no room at any lodging place in Bethlehem. That's because there were a lot of people in town obeying that government edict. Every place was full. But the song clearly indicates the family was running from something and got rejected when they got to a strange town. Both of these premises are not what Scripture says actually happened. They were not rejected by the innkeeper. The hotel, for lack of a better term for it, was simply full. Think of it like uh, traveling to another town when there's a convention going on. The hotels are usually full. If there's no room available, you're not being rejected. There's just no room, and you go find whatever is available. And in the case of Mary and Joseph, that happened to be a stable. And also, they had a home, which they returned to once the registration was complete. They were not running or hiding from anything, and there was no storm. The third and fourth lines of the song say it was for this a child was born, to save a world so cold and hollow. And again, this is partially true. Jesus did come to save a world that was living a hollow life, a life without God. But the first part of the line is simply reinforcing the lies we've already identified. The second verse mentions a savior king had no home. Remember, according to the scripture, the family had a home that they returned to. The implication is that Jesus was born to address persecution and rejection of every kind. Those who are running from persecution, those who are afraid. In other words, Jesus' identity is that of a refugee. So according to the chorus, we're to make room in our hearts for the refugee child who's the savior of the world. Well, we can already see that this song, while sounding wonderful, and, and it is, it's beautiful, well arranged, all of that, but it's not based on scripture. There, there's actually a lot of songs like this that are or have been really popular. In short, this song is not true, therefore it is not honorable, therefore it is not right. In contrast to the song by Casting Crowns, let's take a look at Luke 2, verses 1 through 12. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Do you see the difference between the song and the truth? Which leads back to my original point. Do you know, do you know the word of God? Or are you just accepting what everyone tells you is true about the word of God? Jesus was born to save the world according to John 3.16. Everybody knows and loves John 3.16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Yeah, everybody likes those, but nobody talks about the next two verses. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. And this is the verdict, that light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Jesus did not save everyone by his blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection. He saved and redeemed from sin those who choose to believe in him. So to all of you, Christians and non-Christians, you have to decide what you believe. 
Will it be the testimony of those who knew Jesus or the popular culture telling you what they think the Bible says? A, a culture that goes as far as rewriting scripture to fit popular narratives like the song did. This Christmas, I pray you surrender to the truth, that you choose to fix your thoughts on what God says is true, honorable, and right. Give authority over your lives to the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, the one who died to pay the penalty for your sins and mine, so that by grace, through faith, you can be reconciled to a holy God. Because, after all, that's the real meaning of Christmas. And I think that's going to be enough for now. Thank you for spending your time with us here today at the Chartreuse Leprechaun. It's always appreciated. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We love game suggestions, improvement ideas, gameplay tips. Please no spoilers. Pretty much anything that can help us get better. And of course, there's all the things we asked for your help with in the video. If you enjoy our content here, please hit that like button, subscribe, and set yourself up for notifications. And also, if you'd like to support us here at the Leprechaun, Links are in the description below as well. But finally, the leprechaun is out there, and his mission in life is to mess things up. So remember, always, always, always remember that if you see it, and you can't quite explain it, you can be positive the leprechaun did it. Now you have yourselves a great day, a great week, and we will see you here next time on The Chartreuse Leprechaun. Bye-bye.